My inflation's down to seven, even though I now have my maintenance and training up to exactly like the best part that I'd ever want it to be. My fucking maintenance and training requirement spending right now is like 260 million with all the shit that I have deployed. How's my uranium going? Oh man, I'm making an amazing amount. Just everything I've plopped down in Iran alone, I'm now making like 51,000. I'm currently selling like 20,000 excess uh, production. That's good. I'd rather be a seller than an importer. And there's so much room to sell uranium. Uh, probably because of the 5% tourism hit, but my inflation is just down to 7, which is really, really nice. Oh, yeah. I want to get rid of some of their shit. Let's get rid of their coal power plant. They didn't have a lot of stuff for me to even look at to get rid of. There's just some seaports, some airfields, shrug, shit that doesn't matter. Some of these airfields would be better replaced by air bases so that they'd produce more supply though. Especially in key points where there's not a lot of supply on the island to begin with, seaports or air bases would be very useful to have. Not even to utilize them for that purpose, like their original purpose of being like a sea pier, uh, for example, or, or an air base, but just just to produce supply, literally just to be getting supply pouring in. Because it's not an island that has very good amounts of supply to begin with. Also an island that just has an excessive amount of sea piers. I also shouldn't need this many barracks on this island. They have this many barracks because this is their fucking country. This is their whole country. This is just like a little fucking tiny province for me. So I'm actually gonna get rid of like some of this stuff. Some of this stuff doesn't need to be here. I'm probably gonna get rid of like every sea pier that this island has. Probably like every barracks that's not by the capital. I mean a second barracks here could be nice, but... I'm gonna build some more strategically placed sea ports. Like, one's gonna be on the very northern end of the island. We already have one on like the southwest part. Those two should honestly be enough. An air base here or there could be pretty handy for producing supply. Get rid of any air fields we have actually. Just air bases would be good here. Just for supply purposes. So we have one in the middle. I can have one on the top and one on the bottom as well. Sounds pretty smart. Now let's build an air base near the top area, but not quite on the port. It's going to be attached to this rail line I built instead. Place an airfield over there, so I have one in the middle, one in the northeast, and now one towards the south would be good. But all the way south for an air base. So I have three air bases on the island. I have two seaports. I could get another seaport, put one in like the middle, top, middle, bottom. I feel like that makes sense. Let's put one in the middle, right where I was already deleting a seat here. Reconstruct the entire fucking island. I'm gonna keep the fucking research center though. I'm gonna keep their military base and even expand it. So we had the invasion of Sri Lanka, the invasion of Madagascar, and the giant war in Africa. And now Angola and Gabon are much larger than they were. Angola is now a power to be reckoned with in Africa. They basically just replaced the DRC by themselves, Angola. The bond has uranium. Aren't you satisfied? Never! <laughs> I must have every lick of uranium in the world. My military maintenance and training spending is back down. That's good. Madagascar is repairing. My economy is doing all right just because... My tourism went down, but my tourism's going back up. It's still pretty high. It's at like 7.1. You put away your entire- Hey, yours is 7.1 too. And you put away your entire military yeah. though. Yeah, but I know I can afford it. You see how in like, Things if you look in Iran, cool. or you look at any of our allies, you'll see a lot of them have, um, like a lot of their towns and stuff are staffed currently. Like that stuff the AI does. Like even I do that. If you look at my stuff in Iran, you see a lot of my facilities have units on them. That's not something I do. That's something I let the AI do. I give the AI very generous control over my units. Um, I only take it away when I need to do something specific. And even with him having control over a lot of my units, I still micro quite a lot. All my units are going to fucking reach uh, Indonesia. They're going to arrive at Java and just start scrambling, looking for somewhere to go and what to do. I'm just going to let the AI reassign them all over the home islands. I don't- the AI is usually not very good at reassigning them to other places, like over to Syria and Iran. They, it's usually not that good at managing shit, but I actually want most of my stuff to be at my home islands. I don't want to be split around evenly, because I don't expect to be fighting wars over there. If I do, then I could just move units myself. Well, I think I'm good for-
on uranium for a while. What do you think? Just for a while? I... Yeah, yeah. Unless I, like, rapidly increase my missile production or, or rapidly increase my naval production, I should be good. I'm going to have 23 land productions by the end of this, I think. Okay, then, yeah, I'm going to end up with 24 land productions. Is this excessive? All right, so when you say, like, let the AI, like, decide where the unit gets placed, what do you mean by that? Oh, it just automatically does it. So basically what I have, like, under my cabinet in my defense tab for initiative i give him full control over basically everything most of the time uh and then under the defense tab the third button down two under the cabinet button global rules of engagement like i put them on high initiative and i make sure they can take orders from the minister like the minister control i make sure that's enabled initiative i put that on like high when i'm not actively microing them myself and then the ai will just take care of all of that shit by itself it doesn't even have to be told you're just giving it the ability to do it, and it will do it. Although most of your units right now are on Sri Lanka, I imagine. And I don't know how smart it will be about getting them off Sri Lanka, which is why I just sent all my troops back to my fucking main island, and I'm gonna let him just divvy shit up around the home islands. But so long as you have that stuff enabled, you'll start seeing your troops deploy. Uh, you'll start seeing them go to start uh, garrisoning certain locations and just guarding them. You'll start being able to watch that behavior. Like, this is how I've played the entire game. <laughs> Whenever you want to take control over specific units, you can just, you know, micro them just like you've been doing. Otherwise, if the AI is getting in your way, you just go back to the global rules of engagement, you turn off their initiative, and you make them unable to accept defense minister orders so that you can control certain units without actually turning off your AI's ability to control your other units. Now when it's, it says Minister Control Unit is not available for Defense Minister Orders, is that with the button lit up or like off? If it says that, then it's off. You need to click it to put it on. It's on by default. If it's at that, then you've turned it off manually. It needs to say Unit okay, is so available say, for should... Defense Minister Orders. Okay, got it. The lock should be open rather than locked. Okay. And then you just apply that to all. Got a spy from Norway. For your counter espionage, would that just be espionage under high? Like, for my own territory? Like, how do you do, like, counterintelligence like you're doing? Is that something it's, you said It's for the high? default. Like, when your spies are not doing anything, you don't have them on a mission, they are automatically set to counter espionage. And to increase their oh. efficiency, you build more spies, like more intelligence centers. You could build more security bureaus. That's like, you don't get the spies, but it's just a facility that only yeah, runs counter espionage that. and it's cheaper. And then you can go into your state funding and boost up your total espionage spending in order to boost your counterintelligence. So did you ever get your uh, Satan ICBM? Yeah, dude, I, that's what made me need more uranium. I've been making them. Hard learned lesson, but I think losing those hundred units will make you better at fighting. Now I know what to do exactly, so. Yeah, I've never seen anyone just try to micro everything before without like pausing <laughs> the game and playing on normal speed. Although in fastest speed right now, the game's running like it would run on normal speed on fucking single player. Cause it's just so fucking slow and freezes all the time. So it's pretty easy to micro nonetheless, even at this speed, but like I was saying, without pausing, I've never seen anyone try to micro everything. It made more sense when you were really tiny and going into Afghanistan, but the fact that you kept doing it during Iran was really unfitting, and the fact that you tried it for that entire invasion with the hundreds of your units really showed that it was not intentional, that you just had no idea that there was anything else you could do. Pretty much. Because I realized it, I didn't realize it exactly. I thought you just chose to do it during Iran, and I advised you not to do it during Iran. But seeing you abandon every inch of your front except Nagumbo is how I realized that you didn't know how to do war in this game. I thought it was just a, a choice, because everyone has a different level of micro they want to do. But in this war, seeing your head implode and how much you had to deal with and losing towns and abandoning almost your entire front i was like oh shit he doesn't know that he can even do this does he he's never looked at the military settings oh you got rubber now yes although it's going to be penalized but still a little penalized yeah penalized. but but no keep buying mine no why would you do this buy my rubber <laughs>
I have others to buy your rubber. Buy my rubber! I don't need condoms anymore, damn it. I'm trying buy. to buy here. Buy! Oh man, dude, check the supply on Madagascar. It's so healthy right now. And that's with me building a bunch of shit. <laughs> and not having all the things down that I'm gonna have down that are would be making supply anyway. You can see it's darkest in the southwest around the seaport and in the center around the capital and the military base. Which is not connected to a road. That's not good. This is such a good area for supply. Build a fucking road. Oh, I have a barracks down in Talara, too. I mean, I could probably do with more than one barracks on this whole island. But it doesn't need to be at a seaport. That's not a smart place to have a barracks. I'll put two more barracks down, but I'm gonna put them where they're safer. With my air bases. I'll eventually also want, like, naval production. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm gonna cancel the seaport I'm building in the center. Actually, I'm gonna scrap that. I'm gonna build a seaport nearby on a military complex, because then I can put some naval production. Put it where the road and the rail line meets. There you go. And just so I don't forget why I'm putting it there, I will make sure that it has a naval production on it already. Just so I don't forget why that's there. And then I can get one more ship production going, which I've been meaning to do for forever anyway. Oh, you glorious bastard. You got the fucking nuke too, didn't you? Yep. Uh, I can fucking tell. You didn't even go for a different <laughs> choice. You went for the exact same one. Best one to get. Ah, uh, in my opinion. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. Just because I no, think it I is. researched for this other one. How many do I have? I already have, uh, three. Finished. I have no silos yet. I don't need them yet, but I have ideas of where I'll put some silos. I'm building six silos. Oh, you're already building silos? Jesus, fuck, man. Yep. Where are you putting them? Pretty much right in the middle. Oh, I see them. I see them. Yeah, they're in the middle of, what is this? Afghanistan? Yeah, the south, southwest part of Afghanistan. I actually, I think this is the part of Afghanistan. Yeah, it is. This is the part of Afghanistan that was like the worst location for terrorist activity. Uh, before the Taliban took over the whole country. You could reach Hawaii from there, and literally all of Europe, and Africa. So that location that covers one. basically the entire Eastern Hemisphere. Uh, you can't quite reach New Zealand with it. Oh no, you can. You can. Not their easternmost island, but... the parts of New Zealand that, that matter. Uh, at the top left of the mini-map, there's a measuring tool. So that location you built it can basically cover the entire Eastern Hemisphere. Nearly. Probably, actually, would have more accurately fully covered the Eastern Hemisphere. I mean, it's not too late to cancel it. But if you built it more along somewhere in your river, in your mainland, then that's actually more centralized and you can cover basically the entirety of the Eastern Hemisphere from that river including the furthest parts of New Zealand into the Pacific. Yeah, any target of interest you'd be able to hit if you built that close to, like, uh, Multan or south of there. In, in between um, Lahore and Hyderabad in the south, or uh, in between Lahore and Karachi along that river, that's the best spot you have to make uh, these things if you want to cover the Eastern Hemisphere. The Western Hemisphere, you need a more Western location. Maybe... Be some of that Middle East territory you took. Let me see if you can reach from there. Ah, uh, you can reach. Can't cover, but you oh, can I reach. I can right there in that little plot above Jordan. <laughs> uh, yeah, the problem, you'd be able to hit the East Coast from there, but that's about it. You'd need a more Western location or more Eastern location to really hit the, um, the Western Hemisphere. If I were you, like if I was building stuff over there, looks like you've already canceled what you were building by the looks of it. I would definitely find yeah. a spot along the river, probably around uh, Kanpur or Rajanpur or Jampur or Sakur, just along that main river set. And I'd plot my um, silos down along that river because from that river you can reach everything in the Eastern Hemisphere. 
everything. Otherwise, if you just want to go two extremes, you just build one set of silos over there next to Syria or in Syria, and you build another set on Sri Lanka. Oh man, all this crazy stuff has happened. I'm already halfway through the research of Weapons Industry Advances 3. And when I get that, I can just grab the military systems integration and BAM! It's already T14 Armada time. Is that under the Warfare tree? Yeah. Or the technology tree? Weapons Industry Advances is under Warfare. Spy from Switzerland has been captured. What the fuck do you people want from me? Damn, I should have bought the regular Satan. That was 16,000 kilometer range. Yeah, it does, but it's twice the amount of uranium per missile. It's more expensive to make each one. It does a little bit more damage. Uh, it takes an extra month to make each one. I weighed what would work for me back and forth, and I realized I don't need the 16,000 km range. That's what I was uh, deliberating, which is why I got the upgraded Satan with the smaller range, because I realized I don't need the full range, because I have such far apart territories anyway that I could reach the whole world if I just spread out. Nothing stopping you from getting the original Satan, if you prefer it. I just wanted the more efficient one. Being able to afford missile silos in the long run is not gonna be a problem. Problems are like being able to have the uranium. You already see I'm struggling for uranium. Literally with all the stuff that I built in Iran, I'm still basically hitting my fucking limit right now. I'm producing 48 and a half thousand right now uranium per day i'm using 46,000. damn i'm only producing 13 and using eight i i have six missile productions they're all making icbms and i have four naval productions and they're all making kirovs so i'm requesting a lot of uranium remember every kirov needs a million every one of these nukes needs almost a million the regular satan needs a million and a half, a little more than that. I think I'm gonna plant down the rest of the uranium mines in Iran that I can. Because my economy seems to be letting me. That's another 22 uranium mines. And just so I have enough at all times, and I'll just sell the excess. Because there is a market for uranium. The US and Russia are desperate for it. I'm already using a third of what they're using, just because of the nukes. Hey, Bahrain and Jordan just made an alliance. Our allies are allying. Oh, nice. About damn time. Took them long enough. <laughs> it's still not even enough. <laughs> well, I guess I'm gonna keep buying rubber from you. Good. Feed my economy. Purchase my rubber. Let's see. Anybody else I can take that has rubber too? No. <laughs> no. Hey, your influence is uh, extended now, thanks to Sri Lanka, though, your naval influence. Yes, it is, thank God. And you got all of Sri Lanka's population, so you're much higher than you Maybe were. I'll... Maybe I'll take Malaysia. I, I already <laughs> took Malaysia. You can't take Malaysia. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant Thailand. You're just going to cut me off. All right, fine. You get invaded by South Korea. <laughs> I'm just going to watch. Do they have rubber? Is that what they have? I haven't looked at the rubber map in so long. Yeah, they have some rubber. I don't think I'd get invaded by South Korea. I'd be bordering with Russia. No, you wouldn't be bordering any of them over there, actually. There's the Ivory Coast in Africa. I can take Cote de Lavori. That's, that's the Ivory Coast. Oh, the Ivory Coast. Oh. It, it, it uses the names that they use. It uses, like, the native names. But that's the Ivory Coast. Oh, okay. Liberia, too. Liberia has, uh, rubber. At the end of the day, just, just like, like, buying rubber isn't even that much of a problem, because you're still getting it cheaper for if you synthesized it, and the market is just never gonna run out of it. I will make sure of that. I know. I know. <laughs> there's, there's literally no need to stress because of how abundant it is. I'm not stressing, I just want my own, damn it. <laughs> Well, I'd suggest the Ivory Coast or Liberia. Plus, they're right next to each other. Por que no los dos? Why not take both? <laughs> Why not have both? Yeah, I know, but I, I'm changing it. I get it, I get it. It looks like they have a very good... Like, those are... That's not just rubber spots. That's dark red. Those are very potent rubber spots. Where you could fit down, like, fucking eight rubber things. Be very good to get. And it would... Move your influence into a weird direction in Africa. <laughs> hey, you could put fucking, uh, what's it, uh, the, the, the silos over there. 
Exactly. It's a strategic value. But exactly. Like the US. Yeah. I think there's some in South America. Yeah, Colombia has some. Oh, uh, that's... Oh, Guatemala. Guatemala has a good amount, and they're really small. Ooh, that would be a good target, Guatemala. That's with all my military deployed. I only have one bar. <laughs> because the bar right now, the bar is always relative. It's not relative to you. It's relative to the person that has filled the bar, which right now is the United States. Considering Russia is only halfway on the bar now, I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably fair to assume that the U.S. has been constantly growing. No, they have. The U.S. is up to 2 million fucking army staff. I think that means they have the mill cap penalty for that again. Yep, the U.S. passed Russia's total army staff and now has both mill cap penalties again. Unless we grow faster than the U.S. militarily, then we will not really go up in the bar, the bar very noticeably. Because the U.S. is constantly extending where the bar ends. All right, I'm getting an alliance with another Muslim country. Can you guess which one? Serbia? That's not a Muslim country. <laughs> Serbia. Croatia. Nope. Check your alerts. You got it with Chad. Yep. I've decided not to take their uranium. All right, another Muslim country alliance incoming. Nigeria. Where did you get them already? I already got Nigeria. Sudan? Not Sudan. Somalia. I already got Somalia. All right, check your alerts. Uh, Azerbaijan. <laughs> yeah, dude. Another Muslim ally and one that's actually on my border, so they're far more likely to help me. There's not a whole lot of stuff I can do. My economy is holding at 6.9, despite making all these uranium mines and everything else I'm making militarily, so I'm also going to turn my attention now and make more hydro. It's been a while. Yay. That'll really test what my economy can do. So I'm gonna make eight. I'm not gonna pull any punches. We're making eight. <laughs> Go full on eight. Yeah, All right, well, while you're doing that, maybe I'll work on my diplomatic game then. Try and catch up to some of your allies. Technically speaking, I can already get Bangladesh. I don't know if I want Bangladesh. It could be very handy during an invasion of India. Yeah, there's two countries that I can get that I'm not sure if I actually want to get yet, which is uh, Kosovo and Bangladesh. Yeah, I, I, apparently they're like 98% Muslim. So, I mean, that's a Muslim country. Should we befriend Bangladesh? Is like, is that someone we should keep as an ally? If you want to have access into India, yeah. Or unless you're going to take them. Like, I, I could attack Thailand and then Myanmar to lead me up to India. Or I could just go into Bangladesh. And then even probably even have Bangladesh help me out a little bit. Although their units are probably trash. I just, I don't know. Because they're a Muslim country. Yeah, they are. They have no natural resources almost whatsoever. So it's only worth a strategic viewpoint. Yeah, taking them over, they only have a little bit of oil. They have a fuck ton of population. That's what they have. But they don't have, like, they have a lot of agriculture. But because their country's so tiny, I don't know if they have the UO. If they have the agriculture to support their country, they certainly don't have the timber to support that population. Yeah, it's a very high pop country with, without really the resources to support it. Uh, you know what? Go ahead and take Bangladesh. As an alliance? Yeah, you can have it. I, I mean, I'll only ally with stuff you want to ally with. Them. Yeah. Well, I was going to ally with them too. What, what made you decide on the alliance? Easier access for you to get into India, if it ever comes to that. So you specifically want them as an ally so that if you need my help with India, I can just start another front by myself. That's a valid yep. reason. Just know, once they are allies, yeah, already, already, it would be very I've hard to go back. Oh, I know. I don't know if the game speed has improved at all, but with the 3D terrain off, I can definitely feel my actual client side lag having improved. All right, I'm going to get the alliance with Bangladesh then. Nice strategic ally in case you ever need help in India. I'm building all the rest of the uranium mines in Iran. I am building a full set of eight hydro plants in my territory. And my inflation is still actually ticking down. That's amazing. I've been waiting so long for this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, my inflation went down a bit too. It's down to 7.2 instead of 7.4, so that's good. 
I'm gonna, 316 million I'm gonna pump some of that money into my uh, maintenance and training, just so I can maintain a more efficient and ready military for any surprises that pop up. Oh yeah, the game's FPS is doing so much better right now, now that I turned off all the 3D stuff, it's so nice. Oh wow, Brunei fucking hates me all of a sudden. You know, I'm just gonna support opposition in Brunei, because they're so tiny. And I, I just want to see if they're dumb enough to attack me. Because if they are, like, I, I don't want to be your friend anyway. I could just fucking curb stomp them. Who cares? They're allies with Canada, but if they attack me, I, Canada won't do shit. I'm like, I might as well do it with Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea hates me as well. They're super tiny. Super cheap. I'll just support their opposition. Maybe they'll attack me. That would be kind of funny. And then if they did, they can't make any fucking progress. We have no infrastructure connecting us. I'll just send a bun bunch of troops over and stomp Port Moresby into the fucking ground. It would be really, really easy. Oh, the one downside to the fucking not 3D terrain is I, I can't pick out, um... Jungles very easily. I'm gonna turn that one back on. I need to see what the jungles are. Holy shit, the whole country's jungle. I, I can deal with the, the 2D portraits. I could deal with 2D sprites. Uh, but I need to see what the jungles are. If you hit either of those, I'd probably go for Liberia first. They're a lot smaller. They'd be a lot easier to take over. And then you could just invade the other one through Liberia. In fact, uh, you know, Sierra Leone, I think that's a pretty Muslim nation. And Guinea. And they border Liberia, so you wouldn't even have to do a naval invasion if you allied with uh, one of them. Oh yeah, you could just walk right in. Yeah. So like, Sierra Leone or Guinea, either one of those would be a good friend to make. <laughs> See why I'm laughing? Oh, wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on this since 2027, man. <laughs> I literally just got both of them. <laughs> Muslim you world suck. unite! You suck. <laughs> I suck, what did I do? You got them before me, damn it. <laughs> I did. Oh no. Oh no. Man. Oh no. I, I, I just beat you to all these Muslim countries, man. Like, shit. I mean, oh, no. I wonder how far I ahead I'm gonna you. get. Well, the good thing is, at least they're small. So it shouldn't take much to get them to be friends. Yeah. You know, I think Africa's starting to look a little friendlier. It's like, uh, some African alerts keep popping up or something. Have you checked your alerts lately? No. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even all of them yet. There's more. There's more. Well, you know, again, I'm glad you're doing it first because I probably would have had no idea who to even go for. <laughs> I well, went for, I, can just piggyback I specifically, I specifically went for all of the like 50% plus Muslim uh, population countries. I may have missed one or two, but there's six right there. Oh, there's seven right there. Djibouti, Mali, Eritrea, Sudan, Senegal, Western Sahara, Niger. I think there's more. Or is that all of them? That might be all of them. All the ones I can get so far, anyway. I'm still working on some others, like Mauritania, for example. And uh, Morocco. They've been a little tricky to get. They won't be my friend yet. Oh, Mauritania will actually take one now, so that's good. I guess me being friendly in the region convinced them. Morocco doesn't want anything to do with me because their population hates my fucking guts. I can get everything short of a formal alliance with Morocco, actually. So I'll do that. And then there's Kosovo. Still not sure about Kosovo. Maybe if I get Albania. I can't get Albania. Not yet. But I can get, like, everything Not else yet. with Albania. Alright, cool. That, that That's good enough for me. Let's get an alliance with Kosovo, too. Is this excessive? No, we need it. Yeah? I can get everything but an alliance with Turkey. Let's go for Turkey. Yeah, there's Mauritania, there's Kosovo. I'm aiming now for Turkey, Albania. I'm aiming for Morocco. The rest of the world, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Just befriend the rest of the world like this, huh? Why not? Just ally the whole world and then that'll be it. Game over. <laughs> yeah, that would literally be it. That would literally give us the victory screen if we both allied the rest of the world. Oh, Gambia is Muslim and I haven't been working on them. They're a little tiny country. I'll grab them. Okay, 50% of Guinea-Bissau 
is Muslim. So I'll go for them. All right, I want to see how silly this looks. So you want to see my alliances really easily, by the way. Go to your filters and turn on only the allies and enemies filter and then click on Indonesia. And green is everything that I'm allied to. Oh, good lord. Look at this amazing fucking map. A map that leaves out things like Singapore because it's so tiny you'd barely even be able to notice. But all that green, which includes you, all my allies. Really, I've almost unified Northern Africa with my alliances. Pretty much just missing Morocco. <laughs> like, I have a straight shot. I could run across Northern Africa if I really wanted to. There's also, um, uh, oh yeah, I meant to ask you. So Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, while we're on the topic of them. They are Muslim countries. They are to our north around your territory. Should I go right. for their alliances as well? Or should we leave them alone? Yeah, we can go for their alliances. I mean, they've got nothing for me worth taking aside from just people. Yeah. Uh, they were never really in any interest or target for me anyway. They have some oil. Um, one of them has uranium. Should you get the notification for Nigeria popping up on your screen soon? Ah, uh, yeah. And you got a notification too. I got an alliance with Uzbekistan. Yay! Yay. You must have been already working on these places, huh? Yes. I didn't say much about it, but I've been working on this pla these places for like two years. I wasn't going into any big wars and my budget was doing okay, so I was like, let me just start throwing shit at all of these countries. It shows. <laughs> yes, yes it does. There's just a couple places that I was working on that I haven't quite gotten yet. Fully, but I will. I will. Yay!